Why are people racist? And can this enormous question be answered by art history? I hope so. As a curator, um, I inherit a racist legacy, starting from the 18th century world fairs that featured blind indigenous people um, in order from most primitive to most advanced, um, up to continually contentious um, ethnographic artifacts and museums, um, up to the fact that today in Toronto, one of the world's most racially diverse cities, uh, curators continue to choose solo and survey exhibits that are predominantly white artists, <laughs> except for the notable exceptions that have only come as recently and meaningfully as 2016. My research looks at the racial representation that may inform the kind of modern curatorial exhibits that we see. Um, scholars of um, art history have argued that these world, uh, these world fair exhibits for the first time in the public that ever witnessed this kind of racial hierarchy. However, they came on the heels of the free shows, the most famous of which featured Sartre Bartman. And these came on the heels also and inherited a willing audience um, from the previous century's performance morality plays, uh, which portrayed good Christians being tempted by vice and sin that were portrayed by characters who were dark and sinister. And these, in turn, were informed by beliefs that went back to the seventh century, that Europe was surrounded by um, monstrous and terrifying foreign races um, who represented sin and inward <coughs> conversion. What does this have to do with modern art history? Last year, I was a TA in OCAD's first year of art history, where I heard lecturers teach students that the modernist masters were inspired by primitivism, indigenous to America, Africa, and Asia. Um, <laughs> what I think art history and my research has suggested is that this kind of deplorable uh, stereotype actually originates from a Christianity that predisposes Europeans to see other races as, <laughs> um, to see, I'm sorry, that uh, all of these nodding faces is so distracting, but so exciting, um, that predisposes Europeans to see other races as representations of sin and of vice. This is um, a subtle but I think useful vari uh, variation on the way that we discuss racism today because this sense of sin encouraged Christians to see other races not as inferior to themselves, but as reminders of their own flaws, failings, and potential barriers to redemption. In other words, as reminders of their own sense of shame. So Christian shame has begotten a modern cultural capitalist sense um, of shame, uh, which Uh, Christian shame has begotten a modern cultural capitalist sense. Oh, right. Why would art galleries want to deal in shame? Uh, this sense of shame might be what drives visitors in to, to seek cultural and intellectual enlightenment from curators, a work whose origin is ecclesiastical pastures. And so, this Christian shame has begotten a modern colonial capitalist um, consumer sense of shame. Um, and this is a shame that drives um, populations and galvanizes them into profit-seeking projects from the original um, 11th century crusades all the way up to this modern crusade to make America great again. And so I'm hoping that what my research can do is offer new inroads because as curators and activists, the way that we attack racial superiority might be different from the way we might attack a sense of shame. And I hope that this brings us new uh, suggestions for how as curators we can intervene in the rise of racial intolerance that we're seeing around the world today.